I was brought up in Christian churches that were Protestant and evangelical. And our theology tends to go back to the Reformation. Before the Reformation, the church was the Catholic Church and the Reformation was the breaking away from the Catholic Church, which was triggered very much by the, some of the abuses in the Catholic Church of the idea of purgatory. Purgatory. The Catholic Church had a three-tier system. Um, there's purgatory, which leads eventually for the people who were eventually saved to paradise, and there's condemnation and hell. The whole idea of purgatory was so tainted by the pre-Reformation abuses. They were selling indulgences and they were selling masses to you say masses to get yourself time off purgatory. And it was very much the church could sell time off purgatory. So, I mean, as a Protestant, to raise the, even begin to raise the idea of purgatory being possibly right, I, my whole idea, my whole being rebelled against that. And before the Reformation, in the medieval period, there were lots of pictures. You, you, if you look at the Sistine Chapel, which is famous, depiction of the judgment and God, some going to um, heaven, some going to hell. And it's quite a vivid and a bit scary um, portraits of what that means. And that's not a unique picture, it's just one that I know and is very well known. And then there's Dante's Inferno and a lot of the sort of folk understanding of hell derives from these medieval pictures. I think Probably earlier on, there, there wasn't the three-tier system. I think the earlier ideas were two-tier. The purging hell, which we could call purgatory, and heaven. I like Tom Wright, who's one of the modern theologians I admire very much, pointed out that in the Hebrew mind, a judge is not one who says you are guilty, but he's one that puts things right and sorts things out. And ultimately, if God is the judge of the world, that means that he will be putting things right. Not that he'll be saying you're guilty, but he will be putting our lives right. How he will do it, you can sometimes see it at work in this life. And if grace is true, if resurrection is true, if life after death is true, and if God is at work beyond the grave, then I believe he will go on putting things right in each of our lives, even beyond death. The previous Pope, Joseph Ratzinger, he argues the encounter with Christ is the decisive act of judgment. Before his gaze, all falsehood melts away. And we know this in our own lives and very much so in Paul's life, of course. So this is how he sees purgatory, and maybe this is right. This encounter with Christ burns us, transforms us, and frees us, allowing us to become truly ourselves. All that we build during our lives can prove to be mere straw, pure bluster, and it collapses. Yet, in the pain of this encounter with Christ, when the impurity and sickness of our lives become evident to us, there lies salvation. His gaze, the touch of his heart, heals us through an undeniably painful transformation, as through fire. But it is a blessed pain in which the holy power of his love sears through us like a flame, enabling us to become totally ourselves and thus totally of God. And I thought, well, maybe that's really what it's all about. I think just an encounter with God. <laughs>